Hey, welcome back Strike Eagle fans. This is Not So Here for another tutorial for the F-15E Strike Eagle by Rasbam. Today we're going to talk about the PACS or the Programmable Armament Control System, P-A-C-S. It's the system in the jet that you can interface with all the weapons, uh, both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. And uh, it's pretty much analogous to the SMIS or SMS that you find in other jets. It's just a different name, basically does the exact same thing. Um, I, I find the PAX is a little bit more intuitive than some of the other uh, SMISs that you'll find in other jets. Uh, and it's got a lot, lot of customization, but I'm just used to it, so maybe I'm biased on that. So let's go ahead and jump in. Today, we're going to talk about both the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground PAX. Uh, I'm going to talk about the air-to-air -air first, uh, and then uh, in part two of this tutorial, uh, we'll uh, talk about the air-to-ground stuff. The air-to-ground is quite a bit more involved than the air-to-air, -air, uh, so uh, I'll spend the majority of my time on that. So if you remember from previous tutorials on the uh, screens, you're going to get to the main top-level menu, and we're going to select armament. Armament's the same as packs. I don't know why they did, didn't just call it packs in the menu, but I guess for whatever reason they decided to say armament. But this is the packs. So choose that button. And uh, we'll go into the screen. So when I go into the armament menu itself, we end up in the top level packs. Uh, and you can see over on here on the left hand side, I've got the uh, main air to air packs, air to ground. This is where you can set up your combat jet. I'll talk about later. And then down here along the bottom are your uh, are your load pages where you can then go in and modify the selections on the uh, uh, of of your weapons load. So primarily uh, that modification is more for the uh, air to ground stuff uh, there's a little bit poss possibility for the air to air but the air to air missiles actually will self-identify when uh, you power up the jet and first bring the the packs up uh, basically anything that's uh, plugged into the jet and has an interface uh, directly to the jet should self-identify and that's true for some of the air to ground weapons like smart weapons uh, jdams uh, gb38s and so on uh, and there's a couple of other uh, weapons like the GBU-15 and AGM-130 that also are plugged into the jet that will self-identify. But the vast majority of the rest, uh, Mark 82s, Mark 84s, GBU-10s, 12s, even weapons like GBU-24, GBU-28, and so forth, uh, don't have a direct interface to the jet. So those will also need to uh, be told uh, what's, uh, what's there. So usually if you've got a, a data transfer module that you program in the squadron and you plug into the jet, you already know what weapons are on which station. So you'll program it there in the mission planning computer. And then when the PAX comes up, it will then, you're, you've already uh, essentially told the PAX what weapons are on each station. But if for some reason you don't have the DTM or it didn't work or it failed or for whatever reason, you would go into the, uh, into the load pages to, to, to then tell the jet exactly what store is on which station because uh, that's super important for the jet to know both for its uh, its owls program the overload warning system so it knows uh, whether you uh, uh, have over g'd the jet or not uh, and it's also important for the this uh, its um, cg programming as well as uh, the weapons that it programs up in the hud for all the symbology and so forth so the pax really does play a major role in how the jet operates uh, even beyond the weapons itself, it's actually part of its own system in terms of uh, it knows what weight it is based on the packs. It knows its uh, G limits based on what you tell, the, tell it is in the packs and so forth. So it's really critical that that stuff gets, uh, gets set correctly. And then over here on the, the right-hand side, the final ones are the uh, air-to-ground and air-to-air -air training modes. Essentially, if I were to box those, uh, I can do one or the other or both. Uh, and essentially, if I do that, notice I've got a training up in the HUD. And for whatever I load in the programs, so I can go into an air-to-air -air load and, and change all these weapons. Uh, same thing for the air-to-ground. I can go in and go in and select all the weapons uh, and put them on the specific stations. And even though there's nothing actually on the jet, so for instance, let's say I have a clean training jet, uh, by loading these, I would get all of the, uh, the different... Um, uh, selections and that way I get the programming uh, and symbology for the weapon so I can go in uh, cycle through those so if I uh, step through the different uh, air to ground loads these are all the different menus and different selections I can go through uh, and basically I can just load any of these on the jet in the appropriate spots for the uh, for the, the training load 
and so forth. So anyway, so we'll step back out. We'll unbox these and leave them in the combat uh, packs. Uh, and we'll go into the, uh, primarily we're going to talk about the air-to-air -to, -air to start with, and then I'll go into the air-to-ground uh, packs menu itself. So when you go in, into the, the primary air-to-air -air packs mode, what you're looking at is you're looking at a top-down view of the jet, and it will self-identify the missiles, or it should self-identify the missiles correctly based on, uh, on what it, um, it tells the jet. So the missiles here in the corners are the missiles loaded on the air-to-air uh, -air CFT stations. And then the ones here in the middle are the, the wing pylon air-to-air -air stations. So the two air-to-air -air stations on uh, station two, so left pylon, left wing pylon. And then over here on the right, this is station eight for the right wing pylon. And then again, these are in the corners are the, the missiles on the air-to-air uh, -air load, air-to-air uh, -air CFT stations. Uh, up here on the right, or I'm sorry, up here on the top row, uh, this is a, a view of, of any air-to-ground uh, ordnance that might be loaded as well. Uh, nothing you can do on the air-to-air -air packs page. It's just a monitor to say, hey, you've still got X amount of uh, air-to-ground stuff uh, loaded on those stations. In this case, in this particular jet, we've got a, um, uh, all the air-to-air -air stations are, are taken up, but you've got fuel tanks on the, uh, the, the left and right wing pylons. Uh, the, you've got a centerline pylon, but nothing's loaded on that. But it's important so you can tell that there's actually a pylon loaded because that, that is important. Um, if you were to, uh, if any of these uh, weapons did not identify correctly, uh, let's say, for instance, there is a, um, in this case, uh, I've got a mic, a seven mic on the, uh, the, the left uh, rear uh, CFT station. But let's say for whatever reason, it was supposed to be an AIM-7 mic hotel. I can go into the uh, air to air load and I can toggle this to a mic hotel if I wanted to. But again, it should self identify correctly. And in this case, it is correctly identified as a, as a mic. So let's go into that. Uh, one more thing before I leave the uh, air to air load, you can change the bullet type here. So you can change it from M56 to PGU 28. And you can also adjust the round count uh, based on uh, what, it, uh, what um, the rounds actually should be loaded. This does not self-identify, so you actually have to tell it the correct amount. So 510 is the max, and for whatever reason you knew you had less bullets uh, loaded, you can then uh, use the little uh, buttons here against the arrows and, uh, and update that there. So let's go back into the air-to-air -air, uh, load itself and talk about the rest of the buttons. All right, so again, we talked about the wing form and the upper row. Uh, right here, this is again telling you the, uh, the, the type of bullets you have loaded, so 510 of the M56. And also this button will toggle between the high and low rate of the gun. So high rate is 6,000 rounds per minute. Low rate is 4,000 rounds per minute. So you can adjust that if you, if you like. Most of the time we shoot the air-to-air -air gun in high rate and the uh, air-to-ground strafe in low rate. So I'll leave it in high since we're on the air-to-air uh, -air jet. These two buttons are for your target uh, characteristics based on uh, what you expect out there. Uh, this one is for size, so this S is for size, and R is for the RCS. And this is for the, the fusing, so to tell the missile what to fuse based on the, the target size. And this is the RCS uh, for um, other stuff like uh, when it goes uh, uh, active on the AIM-120s. Um, the auto right here, so let, let's, let me go talk about the other stuff. So you've got um, uh, SM uh, medium sorry, S small and S large for the uh, target size. So let's say you were expected to go up against backfires or bears. You might set a large if you're going to go up against, uh, let's say, a, 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 a Su-27, you might go ahead and set it to medium. The uh, uh, S auto is for your, if you had a, a, an active lock on, a, on a, a target out there and you were able to get an NCTR nectar print, you would, um, uh, if you left it in auto and you had a nectar print, it would go ahead and set that to um, whatever the, the, the uh, NCTR database would tell you and it would automatically do that. Same thing for the RCS based on whatever the nectar print you got. Uh, in DCS, those are uh, currently not um, implemented. Uh, so really those are not gonna have much effect on it. It's just kind of gee whiz that you can set those buttons. Hopefully in the future, those will get implemented uh, down the road. This is your uh, wingman uh, ID based on where you are in the formation. 
Uh, and this is for deconfliction of frequencies and data link uh, frequencies. Uh, so radar frequencies for AIM-7s and data link frequencies for AIM-120s. Again, these really have no effect in, in uh, the current DCS implementation. But if you wanted to, just to, just to go through the realism of it, you can set uh, one of one is if you were a singleton, you were by yourself. One of two if, if you were a, uh, a lead of a two-ship. And then wingman of a two-ship, lead of a four-ship, wingman uh, number two of a two-ship, and so on, all the way back to one. And then this is a selective bit uh, for the missiles themselves, for the AIM-120s. So the way you would do this, let's say an AIM-120, for whatever reason, came up, um, uh, uh, failed a bit, or it was hung, or for whatever reason, you could run a, a selective bit on it uh, individually. The missiles, when they, when they originally come up and you get power to the jet, the missiles will go through a, a bit for all the missiles at once. But if for some reason you wanted to do an individual bit, you could do that. The way you do it is you use the, the missile reject switch on the throttle quadrant, uh, and that's boat forward on the, uh, um, on the throttle. So if I wanted to boat forward and reject over to another missile, I would do that, and let's say I wanted to run a bit on this particular missile. So wherever the box is, is the, is the priority selected missile. And then I would run a bit, and then notice the box goes away until the bit passes. And then when it passes, it comes back up box, back to standby. And again, I can do that on other uh, AIM-120s uh, there. So the, the missile reject switch within the, the weapon select switch. So right now I've got weapon select switch is in the MRM, or medium range missile selection, and that's going to step through all of the available uh, uh, MRM missiles, including the AIM-7s. And then notice that corresponds to what's up here in the, um, in the HUD. So notice I've got two AIM-7 mics, uh, and M means it's an AIM-7, so that's the old legacy. Before we ever had AIM-120s, it was just M for medium range missile. Uh, and then it's differentiated, uh, so it tells you the, the, the quantity here for the mic hotels. And if I were able to step to the, just the AIM-7, notice it says it's, it's, a, it's an MRM, so an AIM-7 only missile. I've only got one of the mics loaded. And then when I get back to the AIM-120s, uh, it, um, it tells me how many of the AIM-120s by type is loaded. So notice right now I've got two uh, AIM-120 Victors and one AIM-120 Bravo. So the Victors are the, uh, the Charlie 5 designation. Uh, and that, the Victor is to, to differentiate it between the, just the generic AIM-120C only. Uh, so if you see an AIM-120 Victor, that is a, a Charlie 5. And later on down the road, if uh, DCS ever implements the Charlie 7s, it would be a, a Victor designation here as well. So notice it says the uh, A2V. Uh, so I've only got two of the uh, AIM-120 Charlie 7s. And then when I step over here to the Bravo, it's uh, AIM-120s are designated by the A, and I've only got one of the Bravos. So that's how you are able to step through the different missiles with the boat or with the missile reject switch or the boat re, um, I'm sorry the, the missile reject switch is the boat switch on the throttle all right so that's it for the aim 120s uh, that is a, a quick and dirty overview of how of what all the buttons do for the um, uh, aim 120s so let me show you uh, the, the cool thing about the wing form is if you uh, uh, are or to go master arm hot. So let's go down here to uh, master arm hot. There, when I go master arm hot, it changes that standby to a ready under the priority missile that I have selected. So if I were to step to another missile, that means I've got a uh, AIM-7 Mycotel is uh, in the priority missile train. And if I pickle, that's the missile that would come off the rail. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got, uh, I've got master arm hot. Uh, and I know that because I've got a ready box here as well as a gun cross in the HUD. So that tells me I've got master arm hot. So let's go ahead and pickle that bad boy off. So there's uh, box one. So notice that missile uh, goes away off of the inventory uh, once I shoot it. So it automatically goes to the next uh, aim seven in the queue. So we'll go ahead and uh, box one again. And then notice the uh, the inventory is gone. If I wanted to then uh, prior or step over to an AIM-120, notice I've got the uh, A2 Victors in the HUD because I've got two of those left. If I pickle that bad guy off, notice now the inventory count, that missile now goes away off of the wing form 
and that missile quantity now decreases uh, down to what's left in there. If I were to go to the AIM, uh, uh, AIM nines, uh, notice the same thing there. I've got uh, SRM missile, so short range missile. I've got one mic loaded, and if I were to boat reject, it would go over to the Lima, and it would show Lima here in the uh, in the HUD. And again, if I were to um, uh, shoot that off, that's gonna it's gonna shoot. And then uh, that will now auto step over to the other priority station, to the AIM-9 mic. And then when I shoot that off, notice that uh, goes away. Uh, and then notice the, the uh, quantity goes to zero based on what, whatever I have selected. And now notice I'm, I'm now boat rejecting. You can't really see it, but because there are no um, SRM missiles uh, left, nothing's really going to change on that. If I go back to the MRM weapon select switch, I go back and now notice I've got uh, only uh, one AIM-120 Charlie 5. I can uh, boat over to the Bravo and boat over to the Mike, and those are the only uh, three missiles left on the aircraft. All right, so that's it for the uh, AIM-1, I'm sorry, for the uh, air-to-air packs. I will uh, go ahead and step over to the other jet, which is configured for an air-to-ground, and uh, start on part two of the tutorial. All right, so we'll be back in just a moment.